everybody. In this last video on fractions, we're going to talk about fractions and equations. And I know we've seen it a little bit, but I want to show you our trick today on how to cancel those fractions out rather than trying to work with them. Because um, as we've seen, fractions can get pretty complicated, right? There's, for adding and subtracting, we need common denominators. With dividing, we're flipping. So there's really a lot going on. So I have a strategy that I want to show you today on how we can solve fraction equations um, by canceling the fractions out. And again, this is just one strategy. So if you prefer to work with the fractions, then that is totally fine too. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them because I think that's what most people end up liking to do. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, and then when, once they're gone, we can just use our regular solving rules. Um, but you don't have to, if you're happy to work with the fractions, you can just work with them as usual. So what I like to do is I multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator to cancel out the fractions. Okay, so this is what I like to do. Um, and again, the reason it's okay to do that, if you think back to our rules for um, equations, it's okay to multiply or divide on the same, uh, as long as you do it on both sides of the equation in the same way. So by multiplying both sides by the LCD, I'm not actually changing the solution. Uh, this still is okay. So let's start with a simpler example to start. So maybe I have two ninths X is equal to four. So here, my least common denominator is just gonna be nine because that's my only denominator, right? If I want to, I could put the four over one, but I don't have to here. So what I do is I multiply both sides by that common denominator. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna simplify. Now, by doing this, you're going to see that you will always get your denominators to cancel out. If they don't, then you've done something wrong. So on the left here, now, what you could do is you could multiply first and then rewrite it over nine, but we can also simplify before we multiply here. So I can move to notice that this nine over nine is really just gonna cancel out, right? I can divide these both by nine um, and I would just get a factor of one there. So I'm left with just two X. On the right here, nine times four is just 36. Now what's gonna happen is I have a regular problem. So now you go back to your regular rules. I would divide both sides by two here and I get X is equal to 18 in this case. Now you can still go back and check your answers by going back to the original and plugging that in and making sure it is still true. So if you want to check your problems, go back to that original, plug in your answer and see if it comes out to be the same value. Now here, again, we can simplify before we multiply. Notice if I divide these each by nine, I get two times two is four over one, which is definitely four. So it does check out. So this is the strategy I'm going to use. I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by a fraction, um, and I'm just gonna multiply throughout. But an easy thing to do is to do that simplifying first here. Um, and instead of running it, division like this way, I'm just gonna kind of cross things out that are the same. So let's try another example. Maybe I have um, three fourths X is equal to one half. So here, use all fractions. I have a four and a two. So my LCD is going to be, oh, actually four, not eight. Um, you could use eight though. Any common denominator will work. It just makes your numbers a little bit bigger. So we try to stick with the least common denominator. So I multiply both sides by four. All right, so think about what's going on here. If you want, you can put this over one and do your standard multiplication, that's okay too. But notice that four over four just cancels. So I'm left with three X. Over here, it's a little bit more complicated, right? So I don't quite get an exact canceling. Um, but if I multiply this straight across, what I see is I will get four over two, which is just two. 
So for your multiplication here, you can go straight across and simplify afterwards. Or if you simplify first, that's okay too. You may notice here that, well, four divided by two is just two, and I can get the two that way. So either is fine. Now I'm going to do a regular problem. Buy both sides by three, and x is equal to two thirds. All right, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of examples here on this because um, it helps to see a few of them done out. So let's say I have x plus one half is equal to five six. Now, again, if you're happy to work with the fractions, you could always subtract one half from both sides using our regular solving rules, but then you're dealing with common denominators later on. So I like to do the common denominators up front here. Um, for two and a six, I could use six and cancel everything out. So I'm going to multiply both sides by six. Now, when you do that, because I have addition here, I do have to use that distributive property. So I'm going to rewrite it. I have six times x plus six times one half equals five, six times six. Now, six times x is just six x. So I can go ahead and cancel that out or just multiply that through. Now here, again, you can either simplify first or you can multiply first, whatever works for you. Um, if you want to multiply first, that six goes over one. So you end up with six times one is six and one times two is two. So you're gonna get a three there. Now here, if we have the same number on top and the bottom, it just cancels. So you're left with five. The other thing you can do here, again, if you notice six divided by two is just three, you can get that three that way as well. And then three times one is three. So you can either simplify and then multiply or multiply and simplify, but you should have all those fractions disappear. Now think back to your solving rules. What did we do next? Well, I would bring that three to the other side. Right, to start getting the X terms by itself. And now I go ahead and I would divide both sides by six. And I do want to simplify here. So I can divide these both by two and I get one third for my final result. All right, let's do another example. How about y over four plus one fourth is equal to negative seven. So my LCD here is actually just four. So even though I have the four repeated twice, I don't have to multiply it out again. I can just use four and I'm gonna multiply both sides by four. Now, if you have a plus or minus, I do need to distribute. So it's gonna be four times y over four plus four times one fourth equals negative seven times four. So what happens here is if you have the same number on top and bottom, it's just gonna cancel. So instead of worrying about multiplying through, I'm just gonna cancel that out. And I have y plus one equals negative 28. Now I can go ahead and keep solving. So I do want the y by itself. So I want to bring this one over. So I'm going to subtract both sides and I get y equals negative 29 as my final answer here. So here I have fractions, I have parentheses. Now think about when we had parentheses before, we always cleared that out first and I actually still like to do the same thing. So even though I wanna cancel the fractions, I actually recommend clearing out the parentheses first. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that one half through. So I have one half times X plus one half times four equals five thirds. So this gives me, let's see, one times X is X. So I have X over two plus one times four is four. So I have four over two is equal to five thirds. 
And again, if I need to here, you can always put these over one to help you stay organized. Now, I can simplify four over two to two. So if you wanna do that, you can, um, but I'm gonna cancel the fractions anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And I am gonna notice that my denominators are two and three. So my LCD is gonna be six here. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by six. So that means that we end up distributing that six throughout everything. Now you can multiply first and then simplify or you can simplify and then multiply. I'm gonna simplify here first. So I notice I have a six over two. Well, six divided by two is just three. So three times X is three X. Six divided by two is just three. Three times four is 12. And six divided by three is two. Two times five is 10. Okay, so now I just have a regular problem and I'm gonna go ahead and start solving. So remember our goal is to get the X by itself. So I wanna bring the 12 to the other side in this case. So three X equals negative two. I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by three to get that X by itself. Then I have X is equal to negative two thirds. Two thirds is simplified, so I am done here as my final answer. And of course, again, you can always check by plugging those values back into the original problem. I will admit that fraction values are kind of a pain to check, right? Because they do have a lot of um, multiplying and like terms and things like that you have to deal with, um, but you can still check them. So you just plug them right back into the original problem um, and we can do that. All right, let's do one last example. And again, you can see it though. All right, here I have denominators of three and four, which is gonna be 12 for my least common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 12 here. Again, I don't have any parentheses, which keeps it a little bit easier. And I do wanna go ahead and distribute. So I have, let's see, 12 times two X plus 12 times one third equals 12 times X over four. Now, 12 times 2 is 24, so I have 24x. I'm going to simplify before I multiply. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then 4 times 1 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and then 3 times x is 3x. Again, I want to keep solving. Now here, don't forget your rules. I have X's on both sides this time, not the numbers. So I wanna get the X's together. And I do want the X's to be alone. So if I have X's on the right and the left, but I have numbers on the left, I think what I'll do is bring my X's to the right this time. That way I can keep my four on this side and bring my X's to the other side. Now just be careful. It's a positive and a negative, so you're gonna subtract and you have to do it the other way. 24 minus three is 21. So we have negative 21x here. And then you're gonna go ahead and divide by negative 20. So I get a final answer of x equals, now that negative can go anywhere. So it's only one negative, it doesn't cancel. So negative four over 21, and that is simplified. So again, you do wanna make sure you check four and 21 have no prime numbers or any factors in common. So that would be my final answer. So again, this is my preferred way to deal with fractions is I would still clear parentheses first if I have them. And then my next step is gonna to be to cancel those fractions and then go back to my regular rules. Um, so if I have X's on one side, I bring them one way, numbers on the other side, you know, kind of keep combining like terms like we have in the past. Um, and the only new step here is trying to cancel those fractions right at the beginning. All right, I just wanted to add one last example here. Um, I just want to talk about this one because it's a little bit different and we're still gonna use the same strategy, but I want you to notice that there are some easy things that you can do first. So if you do see something obvious that you can do, um, you can go ahead and do that like 5X minus 4X, that can simplify right away to just X. So if I can clean up a little bit, it is gonna still make my life easier. 
And over here, I have 2 over 11 um, plus negative 5 over 11. So that becomes negative 3 over 11. Now, if these weren't the same denominator, I probably wouldn't do this because it's going to be too much extra work. But if you have some quick stuff that you can clean up first, you can still go ahead and do that. And then now what I can do is still use that trick of the LCD of 11. So I multiply both sides by 11 here. So I have 11 times X minus 11 times one over 11 equals negative three over 11 times 11. Here our 11s are gonna cancel. So I have a minus one and same thing here, they're gonna cancel, I have negative three. And now I can go ahead and keep solving. So I don't wanna discourage you. If you do have something quick and easy that you're like, I know I can combine those together pretty fast. Um, you can still go ahead and do that before you use this canceling technique. Um, I do encourage you to always do your parentheses first though. So that tends to be uh, the biggest help is to do parentheses first to help you not make mistakes and, um, and things like that as well. Um, so I do encourage encourage that here too, as you go through. But again, if you'd see something small that you can do first, we haven't really seen it yet, like 5x minus 4x, that's really easy that you can combine together on that side of the equation. You can still do that first. Um, but I love this little canceling technique for the fractions. Uh, once I get that far, then I don't have to worry about them anymore. So hopefully these examples helped. But of course, if you have questions, never hesitate to reach out.